This presentation was recorded on October 16, 2021 for the Cargo Connect season and was as accurate as possible on that date. Be sure to check for updated challenge information, rules, and event schedules. Hello, I'm Andy Marglin, Judge Advisor for the First Lego League, and along with my co-judge advisors Trish Poggio and Verna Sladek maharg we're going to briefly summarize the judging process for this season's First Lego League Challenge called Cargo Connect. We like to think of the judges as a very important part of the competition. While we may not get to see the robots in action on the competition tables, the judges assess the teams in several other important areas and give out several awards. We work with a great team of experienced judges, which may include some of you coaches, and we're always looking for more volunteers. So please consider signing up to be a judge for any event you are not competing in. We'll provide you with all the training and guidance you'll need, and we can team you up with other experienced judges. Now, as judge advisors, we facilitate the judging process by training and assigning the judges, keeping teams and judges on time, collecting and distributing the judging rubrics, and making sure the deliberations for award allocations go smoothly. We then get to announce the award winners and advancers who can compete in the first LEGO League Championship in March. Now, a lot had changed last year, and not just that we went virtual. First, revised the entire judging and awards process to simplify it for both teams and judges. This year, they've improved the process even further, including a change by which referees will give input on every team's gracious professionalism as part of the robot game match scoring process. But the core of the overall judging process is still comprised of the three judged categories, core values, innovation project, and robot design. Let's first recap the changes that first made last year. First, and most importantly, the three judging sessions have all been combined into a single 30-minute judging session. Second, the judging rubrics and the judging software that we use to rank and allocate awards and advancers have been simplified, and the core awards have been condensed. Finally, first added a required coach mentor award. Now let's turn to the next slide, where Trish will introduce herself and take us through what happens at a competition and explain a flowchart that depicts the timing and the process of the new 30-minute judging session. Trish? Thanks, Andy. Trish Poggio here. I've been involved with FIRST for over 20 years, first as a coach and now as judge advisor. I bet some of you will catch this bug and start your multi-year involvement with FIRST too. Before the competition, you will receive your schedule, a copy of the rubrics, the session flow chart, which you see above, and the awards list. As you can see in the judging flow chart, there is one long judging session now with two to three judges observing the team. Staying on schedule is part of the process, so we will be using the preparation day to make sure we can all connect promptly. There will be no judging at preparation day, but we do want to make sure all parties can connect. At the competition, team members may have a method to keep them on schedule. If a team appears to be running beyond their allotted time, judges will give them a reminder, but it is up to the team to follow through. Spending too long on one topic will impact the time spent on other areas. Rehearse your timing. We'll start with two minutes for a welcome or introduction. Previously, teams would take this time to move into a room and set up their presentation. Parents and siblings would crowd in too, sometimes making for a chaotic beginning. Some teams might have members introduce themselves. Others might have a chant or other interesting way to make themselves known. We can't wait to see what you do. Now, Andy, could you tell us about the Innovation Project? Thanks, Trish. Just as in prior seasons, the team will have five minutes to present their project, which for this year will be Cargo Connect, showing how they reimagined a faster, more reliable, inclusive, and sustainable way of moving cargo and connecting the world. Teams need to show how they identified the problem, researched it, envisioned a solution, and presented it to stakeholders. Check the rubric to make sure you cover the key points. In prior seasons, teams have presented with skits, songs, storyboards, or actual prototypes. We've seen PowerPoints, videos, and binders full of research. Maybe we missed some ideas. 
Of course, no team does all of that, but consider what works best for your team to communicate with the judges. What's important is that teams present their solution to Cargo Connect in a way that is engaging for the judges, demonstrates what they've learned, and shows how they enjoy the process as a team. At the end, judges will have five minutes to ask additional questions. Therefore, it may be helpful for a student timekeeper to keep track of where you are in your allotted time. Sometimes the judges get carried away with their enthusiasm for the team's project, and they may want to ask several questions or provide feedback. So make sure your presentation leaves five minutes for the judges to do that. Now, turning to slide four, let's hear from Trish about the robot design judging. Thanks, Andy. Next, your team will progress to the robot design portion of judging. Plan to communicate what is special about your robot's construction, programming, strategy, or problem solving. Were there any noteworthy challenges the team faced? Again, look at the rubric to see what your team needs to present. In past years, many successful teams have arrived to robot design judging with an engineering notebook or other method of showing all of their work for the season, but it's not required. The judges may ask, however, how you documented your programming, and so you should be prepared to explain that or perhaps even show or walk through a sampling of your programming code, if that's feasible. And please, don't have your team try to run through all their missions. In an in-person judging session, there wouldn't be a field set up in the judging room, so the team should concentrate on explaining how you designed and built the robot or strategized its missions. What challenges did you face? How did the team overcome them? Show us your best moves. After the team is finished demonstrating their robot design process, the judges will ask clarifying questions and may make helpful observations. Remember, the students do the work. Coaches and mentors merely guide and facilitate, but the team finds the answers on their own. Now, Andy, tell us about core values judging. That's right, Trish. This is the time for a team to discuss what the core values means to them. If this is not your first competition, it's notable to mention that there is no longer a core values poster requirement, nor a secret teamwork challenge as part of core values judging. However, your team is still being judged on how they understand and live the core values, and the judges need to understand how they work as a team. And we still want to see how the team has fun doing it all. The way a team exhibits the core values will be judged throughout the presentation. At the end of the core values judge, judging portion, judges will try to provide verbal feedback on all they've observed throughout the judging session. Now, turning to slide six, we want everyone to have a positive experience at first. Trish, please explain those rubrics. Thanks, Andy. Here's a quick look at the rubrics. They might look tiny on your screen, but they're available for you online. Examine the rubrics carefully to prepare your team for judging. It's a good idea to know what the judges are looking for. The judges will receive a calibration training so that they are all on the same page for filling these out. Performance for each element is evaluated with numerical ratings, one beginning, two developing, three accomplish, or four exceeds. The rubrics are simplified. It's a check, no check rating. Either the team met each element or they didn't. A team has to do something really exceptional to get a four exceeds. At the end of each judging session, the judges send their rubrics to us, judge advisors, and the ratings are tallied and entered into what's known as the OJS, Official Judging Software. The software uses these rating scores to give the team a ranking in innovation project core values, and robot design. As in prior seasons, the completed rubrics will be emailed to the coach after the competition. We try to provide helpful feedback at the bottom. Now Andy will explain about the awards. Thanks, Trish. Like last year, which was different than prior years, there are no longer three separate awards in each category of core values, innovation project, and robot design. Instead, those awards are combined within the category. In other words, there will no longer be three separate types of core values awards, such as inspiration, teamwork, or gracious professionalism. Instead, there will simply be one award for core values as a whole, 
which will take into account those three subcategories, but there simply won't be a unique award for each subcategory. This does mean, however, that there will be more than one winner or finalist in each category. So there may be a Core Values Award winner, but also several named finalists. But they are all referred to as Core Values for that category. Innovation Project and Robot Design will be structured similarly. As in years past, the number of awards given is determined by the size of the competition. First recommends 30 to 50% of the teams win an award. Similar to prior seasons, each team may only win one award with the exception of robot performance. Also similar to prior seasons, the Champions Award goes to the best all-around team. That team will qualify to advance to the championship tournament as well. The number of awards and any optional awards will be disclosed before the competition. However, turning to slide eight, there again will be a Coach Mentor Award, which Trish will explain. Trish? Yes, Andy, the Coach Mentor Award is again required this year. First wants to recognize those who make this competition possible for your team, you. Teams will be able to nominate someone with this form prior to the event to allow time for judging. Our tournament directors will give the directions and time for submitting. This does not disqualify a team from winning another award. Our coaches and mentors do a great job. They deserve to be recognized. Before I tell you how to qualify for the championship, there is one more thing to discuss. It's important to mention at this time the Global Innovation Nomination. This only happens at the championship tournament, but you might want to know about it now so you can prepare. Many teams have great solution to the problem FIRST challenges them with, and some have gone on to manufacture or patent or further develop them. The team that ranks highest in project presentation is nominated to apply to compete for the Global Innovation Award. And now for the details on advancing to the championship. The Champions Award ranking in the official judging software, OJS, determines the advancing teams. The three judged areas and the robot performance are weighed equally. A team can excel in one area to win an award, but overall may not rank well enough to advance. A team can earn advancement by their overall ranking without winning an award. It sometimes happens. The number of teams advancing is dictated by the size of our championship. We can have 40 teams. So whatever percentage of all the teams registered at the qualifiers leads us to 40 teams. That will determine the number of advancers. The advancing percentage will be available before the competition. Question here, uh, for core values, should we have a presentation or is it just Q&A? So, uh, Trish, Andy, Werner? Sure, thanks, Rick. Um, maybe I'll go first and Trish, you can um, supplement. Uh, in, in general, uh, you, you should be able to present in any way that the team finds best to engage the judges as to how they understand and live the core values, both within uh, the robotics world, as well as maybe uh, outside of the team uh, format, um, but there's no uh, uh, need for fancy or formal presentation. We just need to communicate uh, to the judges how they the team understands those core values. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, as in uh, uh, last year as well, uh, there is no need for a core values poster, which was a you know a helpful way to communicate uh, to the judges. Um, the team's understanding of core values during a live in-person presentation, but but teams really should um, feel comfortable uh, presenting that in any way uh, that they uh, feel best to communicate. Um, uh, and there certainly will be, you know, a, a period of time within the judging session for there to be feedback um, from the judges uh, as well. Okay. So thank you, Shannon, for your question. Um, my, uh, more or less neighbor Robin asks uh, if so. OK, I'll, I'll read the question here. So normally parents can only go to the robot design presentations. That's actually the 
project presentations, I think you mean, and not the other two. Assuming we're live in person for all events, would they now be able to sit for the full 30 minute presentation or no spectators at all? I don't think we've discussed that yet. Um, I think we need to think about that as we sort of we're, we're looking at, to be honest, we're looking at several different thoughts about how a fully in-person event would be. As you might guess, the way that we have integrated our schedules with robot runs and running back and forth to judging sessions would need to be revised for those of you that have been to our tournaments in the past. And we're trying to study that now. Um, I don't know that we have an answer on that. Uh, Andy, Trish, do you, I, I'm sure you have some feelings on it. Have, have, we, uh, have you considered any of that? I think we have opposing feelings. I think, you know, that the parents should come in for the whole thing. And I think Andy is concerned. But I really think that COVID plays a big part. And if we have in-person um, events, will we be able to have that many people in a room? That's a good question. So, uh, Robin, we're, um, I think we're going to respectfully not have an answer for you today. But we hope to, uh, we hope to get there soon. Okay, from Stella. Hello, Stella. How are you? And can we still use boards for core values and the projects? Yes. There we have it. <laughs> Whether they be in person or presented with a camera, right? Okay. All right, good. I think uh, most people kind of figured it out in, uh, you know, last season. So I think we've got, uh, we know, we know the, the tried and true methods and we figured out some new ones too. So. Okay, very good. Um, okay, so just to make, Ellen asked to make sure that we get this straight or that, that we've conveyed this correctly. Okay, uh, when the kids compete, it's one session where they do their presentation and their missions, et cetera. We don't go from room to room anymore, is that right? Almost. I wanna make sure you said the M word there with missions. So you still do your robot missions in a separate environment from the judging session. But the judging session that includes these three elements and could conceivably have included missions in the past is combined. So there's one judging session, but you would still have three robot runs in a separate location. Um, and a further question, if time is an important thing, will they be given an agenda that they have to follow if it's in one room okay so that one i'll let you guys answer on on the timing there i think you talked a little bit about that trish yes i think um on the second slide we showed you and it's available on the first website the uh layout of how the 30 minutes is supposed to go so there's supposed to be two minutes for an introduction and five minutes um presentation questions for each area pretty much okay and we are working out on the integration or how that would fit together in a fully live environment where, you know, typically robot runs are in the gym and judging is in a classroom and back and forth. Uh, clearly uh, with a 30 minute session instead of a 10 minute session, it'd be a little bit different. So, um, but we have, we've actually been pondering that for a couple of years. So we're working on that now. Um, thank you. Okay. Um, Rachel asked about, uh, yes, the, um, the EV3 training, uh, we're going to try to record both sessions. And uh, once they're recorded successfully, and once I have a chance to go back and put them together and get them on YouTube, we intend to do that. Uh, I can't tell you how quickly we'll get there, but that's the idea. So uh, yeah, you could conceivably go to the basic session today and watch the advanced session later uh, or the other way around. Okay. And Robin, again, with uh, can kids use Google Slides instead of posters, even if we are in person? Um, that gets to be a little bit of an AV question, doesn't it? Andy, Trish? Yeah, yeah, I would say that there's no reason they couldn't. But uh, as you allude to, it's all dependent on the ability and the success of the teams to be able to get that up and running um, and present it uh, along with their live presentation. But the, the, you know, the focus on this, whether it's in vir uh, virtual format or live in person is we really want to hear from the students 
and not have them rely on you know other uh, external materials if they can avoid it but they certainly can use it to supplement or to display things to the judges um, but it's going to be a function of the ability of the team to you know get their AV uh, act together as it were yeah okay so there you go uh, can presentation boards be used for core values uh, yes they can and whether they are a real f physical presentation board or a, uh, a silicon-based uh, virtual one, either way is, is okay. Okay. All righty. Wow, we are eerily on time, uh, which, which we like to do, but is often a challenge in this session. So any other questions before we get ready for Troy? Hey, Rick, uh, I'll just add one more point. Uh, we alluded to it in the, in the presentation, um, but this year, the, the one material change to um, uh, the, the, the judging uh, really for the first time will bring the referees into the mix, uh, specifically with respect to gracious professionalism. So this year, unlike last year, um, during the robot game matches, which are being assessed by the referees, not by the judges, the referees will be obligated to also give the team a gracious professionalism score of zero to four, I believe, as part of their um, table match scoring. That will factor in through the, um, the judging software and could influence their, uh, their final robot game match. I'm sorry, their, their, it could influence their core values judging, which is also being done separately by the judges. So it's a more explicit, uh, tangible scoring requirement. So. Uh, while in past years, uh, teams were always uh, required to have their gracious professionalism on display throughout the entire tournament. Now there's a discrete scoring element that's uh, input by the referees in addition to the regular judges scoring. And so uh, teams should just be aware of that. There was a update uh, posted uh, on the FLL Challenge website for this year that uh, specifically states that for teams that for whatever reason um, are a no-show to any one of their uh, let's call it three robot matches. Um, if they, uh, uh, for whatever reason, can't make a robot match, whether it's virtual or in person, uh, and they do not notify uh, the referees or the judges in advance to give them that, that fair warning, um, the uh, uh, referees are obligated to uh, give them a score of zero for gracious professionalism. Um, but if they do uh, let us know in advance, then they get a score of three, which is accomplished. So. Um, it's just a reflection of uh, the expectation that teams have courtesy and gracious professionalism throughout the entire um, robot game and judging process. Okay, and there was a question, a follow-up on that, Andy, that how would that work in a remote session? And, and basically exactly the same way. The referees would either, the referees may not be physically at a table in a remote situation as they would in a gym, but they will certainly uh, be online uh, reviewing what's going on. And as you recall, um, we'd have to double check this season if we do remotes, if it would be exactly the same way. But in the past uh, past season, there were some review sessions with the referees, as well as uh, what they saw going on when they were watching the videos. And so um, teams can certainly display gracious professionalism uh, on video. Um, you know, if somebody says, no, not that one, get out of my way and knocks a kid across the room, that's probably not going to score well, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I think that uh, people are still watching the interaction of your students, even if it's on video. So um, and and to be honest, we have always factored in some of what went on in the extremes at the at the tables. Um, so this is formalizing something that's actually uh, had some impact in the past. So uh, newbie question, can a team use one of the standard driving bases like the advanced driving base in the spike tutorial or should they build their own? That would be an excellent question for coach Eric Mealy, who will be hosting a session in about an hour and 15 minutes. Well, can I just program. interject? Go ahead. Sure. Um, I will say that uh, in listening to the judges discuss this previously, oh. most of our technical judges have been around for a long time. So they recognize robots that are um, provided through the instructions. And while it wouldn't disqualify you from, you know, uh, doing well in the robot design process, judging, 
uh, they do recognize people who have come up with their own design. So it's, you know, you can do what you want, but just realize that uh, perhaps if your robot performs the same as another robot in robot design, they'll give extra credit to the one who has a unique robot. This presentation was recorded on October 16, 2021 for the Cargo Connect season and was as accurate as possible on that date. Be sure to check for updated challenge information, rules, and event schedules.